And thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, there is a bipartisan push to try and change the way Maine and other states allocate their electoral college votes. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has the details on what this could mean for future presidential elections. Because it wouldn't matter whether they got a vote from California or from Maine or from Michigan or from Florida. When every vote counts, it creates a very different way of campaigning nationwide. It really, truly is a bipartisan movement. It, it, it doesn't favor one party or the other. Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution grants the power to each state legislature to determine how their presidential electors are selected and divided. Maine is already somewhat unique when it comes to this. Maine has chosen to use a congressional district plan uh, along with Nebraska, while 49 of the other states plus the District of Columbia uh, use the um, uh, winner-take-all rule. During Monday's public hearing, one of the main opposing arguments is that entering into this compact will abolish the Electoral College. Today there is a push throughout the country to replace the Electoral College with this unconstitutional and confusing program. What we're trying to do today is not to abolish the Electoral College, but to use the, 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 the mechanics of the uh, Electoral College to allow every American's vote to count. Proponents of this compact say this will force presidential candidates to pay attention to every voter in every state instead of just hot spots for electoral votes. And for all practical purposes, we're electing the president of the battleground states of America versus the president of the United States of America. Opponents argue this would actually disenfranchise voters by taking away votes from candidates that they would have otherwise went to, such as in 2016 and 2020 with Maine's 2nd Congressional District, which cast their electoral votes for the former president, Donald Trump. And in particular, it disenfranchises every right of center voter in the 2nd Congressional District. With regards to dis disenfranchisement, let's remember what we're creating is a system where every voter in every state is politically relevant every time. The measure will now have a work session before it is voted on in committee and possibly makes it to the full legislature. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, former President Trump is asking a Maine judge to hold off on making a decision on the Maine primary ballot until after the U.S. Supreme Court rules on the Colorado case. In a filing today, lawyers for the former president put forth key arguments for a motion to stay the judge from ruling. They argue that the main court would not have jurisdiction to rule on a federal issue like the 14th Amendment and that the pending U.S. Supreme Court decision could completely reverse Secretary of State Shanna Bellows's ruling. The filing reads in part, quote, even in light of the secretary's clear animosity and bias towards President Trump, the court should nonetheless stay its hand because the secretary's ruling may be effectively overturned, end quote. Secretary Bellows has until Wednesday to respond to Trump's motion. Under Maine law, the judge is required to issue a ruling on this case prior to January 17th, one week from Wednesday. And a new political party known as No Labels is making its way onto ballots across the country. And Maine is now the 13th state to approve the party. Our Grace Blanchard breaks down what this could mean for Mainers in the voting booth. Maine's presidential ballots are expanding as voters now have a third party option for 2024. Secretary of State Shenna Bellows recently approved the No Labels party. That's because they achieved the minimum threshold of 5,000 Maine voters who agreed to enroll in the No Labels Party. No Labels has been operating in Congress for several years, but recently the party has been making efforts to appear on ballots across the country. I think we all have to acknowledge that we've never been in a position like this where so many Americans are frustrated with these presumptive choices that we have. The political party's national director, Joe Cunningham, says they will be offering up a bipartisan ticket following Super Tuesday. Half of Americans now identify as independents. It kind of carves out that lane for a bipartisan ticket uh, on the ballot. Political experts say there is a distinction between a third party like No Label and an independent candidate. If they do put forward a candidate, it will be as a third party, and that candidate will be a third party candidate, not an independent candidate. If they ultimately choose not to put forward a candidate, then they have ballot access, but there won't be anybody on the ballot. According to Secretary Bellows, anybody enrolled as a No Label party member will not be able to vote in the primary elections in March. Semi open primary means that unenrolled voters or voters who are no party at all will have a choice. 
And anyone who is registered in another party that does not have a primary will not be able to participate. For now, the political party is focusing on attaining ballot access in all 50 states. The fact is the partisanship has gotten so tough and um, so impactful. Somebody has to do something about it. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In other news, the Maine National Guard may soon see its first female commander. Today, the Veterans and Legal Affairs Committee voted to officially nominate Brigadier General Diane Dunn to replace Major General Doug Farnham as the Maine National Guard's adjutant general. The role will also make General Dunn the commissioner of the Maine Department of Defense, Veterans and Emergency Management. General Dunn spoke at her hearing about how she is looking forward to assuming this role. I'm honored to be nominated by Governor Mills. I am deeply committed to serving our state and nation, the members of the department, their families, and our veterans. This commitment is my reason for pursuing the goal to become Maine's next Adjutant General and Commissioner of the Department of Defense, Veterans, and Emergency Management. The committee voted 8-3 to three to send Dun General Dunn's nomination for a full vote of the legislature. One of the lawmakers that voted no to the nomination questioned General Dunn on the global war on terror as well as her thoughts on diversity, equity and inclusion. I mean, her answers on the Defend the Guard legislation and, and her role administering and her oath to the Constitution were number one for me, um, though I did feel like, you know, she mentioned that uh, promotions in the military were blind, they didn't take in race or gender, um, but DEI, which she instituted at the college, is the opposite of that. And real life's probably some kind of middle ground of that, but having these binary choices and forcing uh, folks to hire maybe not the best person uh, isn't great and probably not great for our military. So I think you know, it definitely played into my uh, rationale as well. General Dunn's nomination will now go to a vote in both chambers before she can be confirmed. Currently, no date has been set for that vote. Well, while Glenn Mosier's position as police chief in Ellsworth remains in question, the Ellsworth City Council made a decision tonight regarding his role as city manager. Item 18, discussion and possible action as a result of the executive session to extend the contract for city manager. This comes after the council deliberated for more than an hour behind closed doors. Almost all of the committee members voted in favor of extending Mosher's contract as city manager. Stephen O'Halloran was the only committee member who opposed the decision. It's unclear how long the city council will be extending his contract for or whether Mosher will accept the extension. Mosher was put on indefinite leave as police chief on December 27th, pending the outcome of an internal investigation from the Ellsworth Police Department. It's unclear where that investigation stands right now. A Winslow firefighter was arrested last Tuesday following a theft investigation. 34-year-old Sean Stetson of Fairfield was charged with stealing in excess of $12,000 from the Winslow Firefighters Association. According to the Kennebec County Sheriff's Office, the department was contacted by the association on December 28th after an internal investigation had revealed that several thousand dollars were missing from multiple accounts. Stetson was a member of the Winslow Firefighters Association and allegedly started making cash withdrawals in February of 2023. His bail was set at $500 cash with the conditions of not having any contact with Winslow employees and not returning to the town property except to pick up any personal items that may still be there. Well, switching gears now, this next storm is raising flooding concerns, especially, especially along Maine's coast. And this comes less than a month after a significant flooding inland during the last big storm. But as Owen Kingsley reports, conditions this time around are a bit different. Multiple inches of rain Wednesday after a heavy snowfall is a bad combination. A coastal flood watch is posted for all of Maine's coastline. If temperatures stay in the low 40s Wednesday, the snow might act as a sponge and absorb much of the rainfall. If the temps rise above 50 degrees, then melting and washed away snow will likely make the threat of flooding much worse. This ground is frozen, uh, but it's frozen except for that tiny little part that almost touches the house because the, the basement's warm. And it's almost a vulnerable point when you say the water pools up. Absolutely, you got it. 
Water pools up and it finds that sweet spot. Mike Morn with TC Hafford and Wells says that can lead to flooding in a basement of a home or business. He says you can try several things to keep water away, clear your gutters or add extensions to the bottom. He also says if snow is up against your house's foundation, that may not leave any room for water to drain away. Snow blow all the way around their house uh, to keep again uh, to, to provide uh, an opportunity for water to to shed away from the house. The state's emergency management agency met with local authorities Monday afternoon to prepare for the next storm, saying flooding is possible. It won't be, though, as severe as what we saw last month. You can't get complacent. Um, every storm needs to be taken seriously. We're going to start with enhanced monitoring on Tuesday morning, and then as the storm unfolds, we will elaborate our team and grow as the resources are needed from our uh, county EMAs. What Mima is also worried about are those strong winds expected to reach at least 50 miles per hour for parts of Maine's coast Tuesday night into Wednesday, and outages are likely. Certainly not welcome news there. Well, let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast and see what Jeff has to say about what's coming our way. All right, thank you very much. Let's start here. A strong storm system is on the way for not tomorrow, but for Wednesday. Damaging wind gusts are now likely. Wind gusts to 60 to 70 miles per hour on Wednesday and heavy rain, snow and surf out there as well. Tonight, though, no issues at all. Lots of clear skies out there currently. Here's our system, though, and it is eye candy for meteorologists, but this thing means business. It has lots of energy, lots of wind, lots of rain, lots of sleet, and it's all coming our direction for later tomorrow night and throughout the day on Wednesday. So here it comes tomorrow increasing clouds by tomorrow evening. Here comes that snow. That snow could be heavy before changing over to all rain. That rain could be heavy as well. And that continues tomorrow night, late tomorrow night into and throughout the day on Wednesday into Wednesday evening before it all gets out of here later on Wednesday night. OK, so going forward, though, here are the advisories. They're all over the place, right? So over here, just think winter weather effects here, high wind warning here, heavy surf advisories here. Uh, we're going to go through a lot the next couple of days. Tomorrow is the calm before the storm. It's about to be rain, freezing rain, sleet and snow and all of it could be heavy, especially the wind with those wind gusts to 70 miles per hour on Wednesday. Our forecast and looking at partly cloudy skies or increasing clouds late. Look for low temperatures in the teens. Your full forecast is coming up. All righty, Jeff, thank you so much. We'll be waiting for it. In the meantime, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, snowmobile clubs have been working hard to try and repair trails damaged by this winter storms, but they're having a tough go of it. We'll have more on that. Toyota's all-wheel drive vehicles not only conquer the elements, Toyota conquers its competitors by sheer selection. You see, Toyota has 22 different all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive models. That's more than Subaru, more than Honda, more than Jeep. Conquer most anything with the adventure-seeking all-wheel drive RAV4 or the electrified all-wheel drive RAV4 hybrid, both with Toyota Safety Sense technology included. See your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. Don't get cold feet this winter. Stay warm and dry with high-performance footwear from Comfort Shoes and more. With an extensive selection of winter boots rated from 0 to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll find comfort in knowing your feet will be warm in any weather. Discover the latest in functional and fashionable footwear with grippers built right into the sole. With boots in stock up to 6E and size 17 for men and women. Take the drive to Newport for a sit and fit to find your perfect fit. You and your feet will be glad you did. The year-end clearance sale is on at Maine's number one Kia dealer, Van Sickle Kia. Save over $3,000 on an all-wheel drive 2019 Toyota Highlander or 2022 Ford Explorer King Ranch. Or drive a 2022 all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza Premium for just $23,999. Best $4,075 below book. Choose from Chevys, GMCs, Toyotas, Subarus, Jeeps, Rams, and more. Van Sickle Kia has something for everyone. More car, more value, less money. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. 
Tuesdays, big names go head to head. I can name that tune in one note. Whoa! Celebrity Pack, name that tune. Only Tuesdays on Fox. Hi there, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, we'll check in with the Orno Food Cupboard to see how they've been faring. Plus, all the latest with the Trump legal filing, as Monday was a deadline for his team. Plus, the latest from Augusta, where the Electoral College held a public hearing. These stories and more coming up on Good Morning Maine. Welcome back. The Orono Health Association started in 1969 as a, as a program for dental care for kids in the area, but over the years, it's grown, and now they hope to start up a food pantry for, areas, for fa area families in need. Excuse me. The food pantry will be located in the same building as their thrift store, which carries clothes, shoes, and even appliances. The Health Association is also involved with heat assistance and scholarships for Orono High School students going into healthcare related fields. Leaders say the need is real and they just want to expand their services to help more people. It's a relatively small food cupboard. Um, it's going to be just dry goods for now. Um, non-perishables. Um, we don't have the capacity at the moment to do um, things like meat and dairy. Um, perhaps in the future if we can gain a bigger space. But we're just looking to take a little bit of pressure off of families with things that we can do. Sonnenberg says they have acquired some grant money to launch the food cupboard and they use proceeds from their thrift shop as well. But they are looking for more donations to help get them going. They don't expect to be up and running for a couple of months, though, and we will have donation and contact information for the Health Association on our website coming up a bit later this evening. Well, snowmobile clubs in the Bangor area have been working hard to restore the trails after the impact of last month's storm, along with a lack of snow. But that one-two punch has made many of those trails unusable. Our Doug Banks has the story. Riding trails in some parts of the state this winter hasn't gotten off to a great start. Stay about the same for amount of trails we have, but the snow's been late getting to us every year. It seems like a little later every year. According to Al Sweat, president of Maine Snowmobile Association, he hasn't seen conditions like this since the ice storm of 98. The weather has destroyed a lot of our trails, completely wiped out bridges that the clubs have been rebuilding, and it's just been horrible. The trails maintained by the Paul Bunyan Snowmobile Club in Bangor cover over 20 miles. On Saturday, members spent the day clearing out fallen trees. If we get a big windstorm and it takes us two, three weeks to clean that up, you know, that may be a quarter of the season gone. Sweat says Maine's winter outdoor economy is about a month behind its usual pace, not only impacting the riders on the trails, but also the businesses along them. He's supporting businesses. They, they count on snowmobiling to, to take them through the winter to the spring, you know, then ATV folks take them through the summertime. By the end of the week, Sweat says he'll be speaking with Governor Mills to see if there's available federal money to put towards clearing up and improving the trails. These clubs, they, they hold chicken barbecues in the summertime and, and auctions to make it through the winter. Um, and with, when you get a disaster like this, their, their money goes pretty fast. In Bangor, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, an explosion rocked downtown Fort Worth earlier today with more than 10 people confirmed injured. We'll have the latest from the Fort Worth Fire Department's investigation. And the FDA has approved a Floridian plan to import lower cost pharmaceuticals from Canada. Those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. I cried when a mammogram showed a lump that turned out to be breast cancer. I almost skipped that mammogram because of my workload, but it may have saved my life. If you're a woman between the ages of 50 and 74, talk to your provider about being screened for breast cancer. After treatment and surgery last fall, I'm so relieved to be cancer free now. Watch for changes in your breasts and learn more about breast cancer screening at screenmain.org.
Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candlepin Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNet Speed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind blowing. Let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. 81 contestants. Come at me. 81 categories. Space. Dessert. I love movies. And a trivia duel until only one survives. Terminator. Jerry Maguire. Uh, pass. Let's light it up. From the creators of The Voice and Big Brother. Let's go. Comes the most epic game show ever created. Who will conquer? The Floor. The Floor. All new Tuesdays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Looking at headlines around the nation now, emergency crews responded to an explosion in downtown Fort Worth earlier today. Fort Worth MedStar confirms that at least 11 people have been injured. Fort Worth Fire Department saying that despite claims on social media, this does not appear to be an intentional act. We've got a lot of things that are going on on social media right now that are getting a lot of people concerned. There, there is a smell of gas in the area and, and there were windows and things that were blown outside of the structure. So right now, through our investigation, it looks like it is more of a some type of gas leak. Well, that incident is still under investigation and the Fort Worth Fire Department stresses that they have not yet made a determination as to who or what caused the explosion. The National Transportation Safety Board says it is making progress in its investigation after a door plug blew off an Alaska Airlines plane mid-flight on Friday. While no one was seriously injured, the mishap launched a temporary grounding of certain types of Boeing aircraft. Fox's Kennedy Hayes has the latest. Newly released images from the National Transportation Safety Board show the Alaska Airlines door plug that flew off the side of its Boeing aircraft Friday, recovered in the backyard of a Portland school teacher. It must have been a terrifying event to experience. The NTSB says it's sending the door plug as well as the plane's black boxes to its headquarters in Washington for further inspection after investigators over the weekend interviewed the flight crew and witnesses. We heard a really loud boom and the plane just filled with air and wind um, and the oxygen mass dropped. Over the past several days, the mid-air emergency forced a temporary grounding and immediate inspection of other MAX 9 jets as travelers scrambled to find alternative flights. It's been really hard finding a way to reschedule because MAX 9s have been a huge part of United's fleet recently because they're brand new. United Airlines alone, the largest operator of the 737 aircraft, canceled 200 flights Monday during inspection. The airline says it discovered loose bolts on its 737 MAX 9 fleet, adding in a statement, quote, since we began preliminary inspections on Saturday, we have found instances that appear to relate to installation issues in the door plug. For example, bolts that needed additional tightening. We're going to really have to take a closer look under our microscopes and uh, evaluate each of those components to really figure out what went wrong here. This isn't the only issue Boeing has had with its 737 MAX aircraft. Boeing CEO summoned employees to an all-hands meeting Tuesday. In Denver, Kennedy Hayes, Fox News. President Biden went to South Carolina earlier today 
earlier today to shore up support in the Democratic primary's first state amidst a drop in poll numbers. Meanwhile, the GOP candidates are crisscrossing Iowa one week from the Hawkeye State's caucuses. Fox's Caroline Shively has more from Washington. President Biden spoke at the historic Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina on Monday, recalling the murder of nine black worshipers by a white supremacist there in 2015. The word of God was pierced by bullets and hate, rage. Biden's speech was briefly interrupted by protesters chanting against U.S. support of Israel's actions in Gaza. But they were quickly shouted down. More than a quarter of eligible voters in South Carolina are African-American. A USA Today Suffolk University poll released last week shows that Biden's support among black voters has dropped to 63 percent nationwide, down from the 87 percent who voted for him four years ago. It's a notable erosion in the coalition that helped Biden beat Donald Trump in 2020. The truth is, if that election happened today between Trump and Biden, Donald Trump wins. On the GOP side, the real clear politics average of polls shows Trump leading his GOP rivals by more than 50 points. This is going to be a what it looks like a very short Republican primary and what's going to be a very long general election. Bad weather canceled some campaign events across Iowa Monday. Forecasts for next week's GOP caucuses predict sub-zero temperatures. As long as there's not a severe ice storm. I, I don't think cold keeps people away. Vivek Ramaswamy took a swipe at candidates who'd canceled events, telling a crowd in Iowa, if you can't handle the snow, you can't handle Xi Jinping. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Israel says it's shifting its focus to central and southern Gaza, bringing new tactics to the fight after three months of heavy civilian casualties. Fox's Alex Hogan now from Tel Aviv. After three months of intense fighting, Israel says its Gaza offensive is officially entering a new phase. An IDF spokesperson claims the Hamas threat is mostly eliminated in the north, and now the military will turn its attention to central and southern Gaza. But they say this phase is expected to be significantly less intense, meaning fewer ground troops, airstrikes, and more targeted attacks. It might not be the end, but it could be the beginning of the end, because we're seeing the uh, the. The destruction of Hamas's military machine in the northern Gaza Strip. It could also mean a greater focus on taking out the militant leadership. Last week, a top Hamas commander was killed in Beirut, and on Monday, another targeted assassination. Israel reportedly taking out Hezbollah commander Vissal al tawid who reportedly led the group's most elite fighters. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hinting there could be more to come. We gave him an example of what is happening to his friends in the south. This is what will happen here in the north. We will do everything to restore security. But civilians in Gaza are skeptical about this new phase of the war. They say the situation is already so dire, simply ending the airstrikes won't help at this point, and more aid is needed to avoid a humanitarian catastrophe. I don't know where to stay. I don't know where my children will sleep. Will they sleep on the sand? There is no safe place. There is no hygiene. There is no life. And U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in Israel on Monday, pushing for a new potential ceasefire and more aid for civilians. In Tel Aviv, Israel, Alex Hogan, Fox News. In a move aimed at cutting costs, the FDA approved a Florida plan to allow the state to import certain prescription drugs from Canada. The idea, which has been discussed on the campaign trail, is now finally being put into practice, much to the chagrin of the pharmaceutical industry. Fox's Rebecca Castor reports from Washington. It's a historic win in the battle to lower drug prices in the U.S. Now with the FDA's approval, lower-cost medications from Canada will soon be available to patients in Florida. More competition increases choices. This is a free market solution. Some medicine in Canada can be nearly half the price of the same drug in the U.S. The state estimates Floridians will save about $183 million a year once the program is fully up and running. But U.S. pharmaceutical companies are pushing back, with their lead lobbying group saying in part, quote, We are deeply concerned with the FDA's reckless decision. The importation of unapproved medicines, whether from Canada or elsewhere in the world, poses a serious danger to public health. The idea that we can't assure the quality of drugs in Canada is ridiculous. It's long been true that those are safe drugs. 
Several other states, such as Colorado, Maine, and New Mexico, are waiting for FDA approval on their drug import programs. In 2021, President Joe Biden issued an executive order urging the FDA to prioritize this. The green light for Florida, a big win for his potential opponent, Governor Ron DeSantis, on the campaign trail. So 2019, my first year as governor, we said, I want, you know, health care costs are high, prescription drug costs are high. What can a state do to lower prescription drug costs? Before Canadian drugs can be imported, Florida must ensure the medications have been tested, relabeled, and comply with FDA standards. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, a historic private moon mission went a little sideways shortly after launch earlier today, with a team hopes to be able to salvage from the mission. And in sports, the Flag Twins had a few games in Maine this weekend, in case you hadn't heard, and it was everything you would have expected. We'll be right back. Who's a fake? Let's get it on. And who's the real deal? Path from the star to the field. All new I Can See Your Voice, Wednesdays on Fox. My father started a roofing company in the 1970s. Back when asbestos was still commonly used in Maine. When George was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew there wasn't a cure yet, but we knew he needed help. We call Jeb Bornstein's office because this family means business. Their team is handling everything representing Mainers who were victims of asbestos exposure. We highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Do you have a wet basement, nasty crawl space, settling foundation, sinking concrete, or clogged gutters? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basementy. For over 30 years, thousands of homeowners throughout Maine and southeastern New Hampshire have trusted TC Hafford. Basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, stabilizing foundations, concrete leveling, and gutter installation. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems for all things basementy. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, your local affordable destination. We want to provide you with the best experience we can without costing a small fortune. Our ever popular nine hole black light mini golf course is a huge attraction. Plus we have the best arcade video games to choose from including both modern and retro games. We have weeknight specials consisting of... We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orno Arcade. This is incredible. Wow. This Thursday on Fox, Gordon hits the road to Spain in a brand new special. It's so tight. Let's do this! You have to be kidding me. Six cities. So no menus, you just shout. Three friends. You're shouting over me. Endless flavor. <laughs> that looks incredible. This is exactly why I brought to Spain. Bravo. Gordon Ramsay's road trip Spanish vacation. Two episode event begins this Thursday on Fox. A potentially historic private mission to the moon appeared in danger as of Monday. Jonathan Sari is in Atlanta with the latest. Four, three, we have ignition. Nearly seven hours after its successful morning launch, Peregrine, the robotic spacecraft headed toward the moon, suffered a technical problem. In a statement, private U.S. company Astrobotic reported on the issue, saying, quote, the team believes that the likely cause of the unstable sun pointing is a propulsion anomaly that, if proven true, threatens the ability of the spacecraft to soft land on the moon. The blow comes as the company had hoped to make the first soft landing by a U.S. spacecraft on the moon in more than 50 years, as well as the first ever lunar landing by a private company. These little landers that are going up to land in the next couple of months, they're the scouts. NASA paid Astrobotic more than $100 million to develop Peregrine with the plan to fly the space agency's science experiments to the lunar surface. 
There have been scientific questions for decades that we that people, scientists in the United States around the world have been dying to get back to the surface of the moon to do. But with Peregrine also carrying multiple commercial payloads, the potentially historic private mission also launched debate over what, if anything, should be sent to the moon. A plan to deposit human remains prompted criticism from the Navajo Nation, saying it would be a desecration to the celestial body considered sacred to many tribes. The moon doesn't have the status of a national park. It's not protected at all. And again, the question is, should it be? Um, and, and that's something that humanity has to wrestle with. Another contracted company, Houston-based Intuitive Machines, is also looking to launch next month. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Well, Astrobiotics, Astro Robotic rather, says its team is trying to stabilize the loss, but is also assessing what alternative mission is feasible given that malfunction. Well, a disturbing new report finds the average liter of bottled water contains nearly a quarter million microplastics. Scientists, for the first time, have been able to detect them using a microscope with dual lasers. For a long time, it was suspected that there were a lot of these microscopic plastic pieces in the water. But researchers at Columbia and Rutgers universities have been able to get an idea of just how bad the problem is. A study in Monday's Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences Journal says the particle levels per liter range from 110,000 to 400,000, averaging around 240,000. Many come from the bottle itself. If the plastic particles breaks up, it does not stop at the micron size. It can actually go even smaller. So once it, the size goes below one micron, people call it nanoplastics because now it's in its size is in the nano range. Researchers say that although the nanoplastics found do contain chemicals that are known carcinogens, further research is needed to know if they are causing harm and how dangerous they may be. Well, another round of rain and snow was on the way for millions of Americans, and it's threatening to cause severe flooding and power outages across two thirds of the country, as we've been talking about. Fox's Nicole Valdez has more. As thousands across the Northeast race to clear snow from streets and sidewalks, another winter storm now threatens the same region. In New Hampshire, dozens of schools were closed Monday after a weekend storm dropped more than a foot of snow in some places. Forecasters say this next system will bring heavy rain to the eastern U.S. on Tuesday. That rain, combined with snowpack and strong winds, could lead to severe flooding. Many say they're taking precautions. It's definitely been slippery um, for sure, but we, we've had to make sure that we're, you know, stepping over on sidewalks. Most of the time we're walking in the road just because the sidewalks are too slippery or whatnot. This system also threatening to flood communities further south where the ground is saturated from previous storms. Officials on Florida's Gulf Coast went door to door, handing out sandbags to flood prone communities. It's been so gut wrenching what's been happening to the neighborhoods over the last couple of months. And and once you use a sandbag and it becomes wet, you can't reuse it. But the snow is the major threat here in Iowa, where people woke up to winter storm warnings Monday. As this system moves from the plains to the Midwest, the National Weather Service saying up to two inches of snow could fall per hour through Tuesday. And forecasters say strong winds will accompany that snow and limit visibility along the roads. In Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Nicole Valdez, Fox Weather. So definitely a lot of Americans are going to be facing challenges from Mother Nature in the coming days, that is for sure. Well, folks, there is much more to come. Stay with us. You and I are about to go through some things, snow, wind, and rain all on the way. Details on that when I come back. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Silver Fox Automotive is a family-owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. 
We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Winter is flu season, and not only that, but COVID is still with us, as is RSV. Remember, it takes your body about two weeks after you get any vaccination to ramp up those antibodies. Now is the time for you and your family to get vaccinated against the flu, COVID, and RSV. Updated vaccines are now available for flu and COVID-19, and depending on your age, active steps you can take to prevent RSV. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist, or go to vaccines.gov. A message from the Maine CDC, this station, and the Maine Association of Broadcasters. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. It's the new celebrity guessing game. Who is the celebrity behind the relative? That could win you life-changing money. You got it right. We are family. All new Wednesdays on Fox. All right, let's start here. Another strong storm system is on the way for Wednesday. Not tomorrow, but for Wednesday. With damaging wind gusts are now likely. Wind gusts to 60 to 70 miles per hour again. I know it's like deja vu. And heavy rain, snow, and surf is on the way for us for Wednesday. Lots of clear skies out there right now, but increasing clouds to the west. And here it is. Uh, this thing is strong. It's powerful. It has lots of moisture. It also has lots of cold air and some warm air. And it's all moving in our direction, uh, bringing lots of effects for our region late tomorrow night, but more so on Wednesday. So increasing clouds tomorrow. The first burst here is going to be potentially heavy snow. That's going to be late tomorrow night, probably after midnight or so. And here's Wednesday, 2.30 in the morning, looking at snow, heavy snow across the area. That will change over to rain sometime late tomorrow night in the early parts of Wednesday morning. That rain could be heavy as well as the wind gusts near 60 to 70 miles per hour. And that keeps going into and throughout the day on Wednesday. It all gets out of here Wednesday night, followed by a quiet day for us on Thursday. But another system is back behind this one that will likely get in here over the weekend. So the wind is going to be a huge factor with this. We're talking wind gusts of 60 to 70 miles per hour. We did that a couple weeks ago, all sorts of damage. So power concerns are a concern for the area, especially on Wednesday afternoon with those wind gusts around 60 to 70 miles per hour. All right, the advisories are up and they're all over the place and they're numerous. Just think the effects here, right? So so winter weather uh, warnings here, uh, high wind warnings here, heavy surf advisories here. All of it's going to be a big mess across our region late tomorrow night and Wednesday. So travel plans will be impacted by rain, freezing rain, sleet and snow and wind. Uh, again, those wind gusts to 70 with heavy rain falling is going to be a thing that could last for several hours on Wednesday morning. Temperatures, of course, are critical. Highs today hanging out in the 20s. Uh, that's not going to last much longer tomorrow up near 30 and then many of us could go for 50 or so on Wednesday afternoon and the rainfall looks like this so system one gets in here of course with rain we could see a one to two inch rainfall even three inches from this on Wednesday afternoon and then that's going to go through but then another system gets in here on Saturday look what happens another round of equally heavy rainfall so by the end of the week we're talking about four or five inches of rain across our region it's not going to be rain There'll be some snow in here as well places like Millinocket back toward Greenville, could see close to a foot of snow from this system on Wednesday. Our forecast tonight, they're looking at lots of clear skies out there, low temperatures down near 16, with that west wind around 5 to 10 for tomorrow. All right, so the calm before the storm, right? So increasing clouds tomorrow, high temperatures reaching for 30. We might do it with a calm wind for several hours tomorrow. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows the big mess on Wednesday, high temperatures up near 50, Thursday 40, Friday 38. Our next system gets in here, could be equally strong on Saturday with high temperatures back up near 50 again. All right, so just crossing our fingers that we come through this next storm. Okay. Well, we've got sports coming up next, folks. Stay with us.
Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Mm. Not again. Get your Toyota ready for the year's coldest and harshest weather. See your New England Toyota dealer for great service offers to help keep your Toyota dependable and fuel efficient all winter long. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Are plumbing problems giving you a headache? Look no further than Sprague's Plumbing Solutions. With more than 10 years experience, Sprague's Plumbing Solutions has the knowledge to assist with your plumbing issues. Whether it's a service, remodel, new build, or commercial, we've got you covered. For reliable, professional plumbing services, call Sprague's Plumbing Solutions today for a free estimate. 951-1637. We're here to make your plumbing problems disappear. When it comes to protecting the world's cuddliest creatures... Oh, I do a little love muffin. Oh, 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 geez. Ow! You need animal control. All units. Any unit. When we work down here, we're going to go in here and take care of it. Joel McHale. We just got a 911 on a bear in a hot tub. He looks so relaxed. Did he turn the jets on? All new Animal Control returns this March on Fox. And catch up on Season 1 anytime on Hulu. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin on the basketball court. It was a great weekend for Maine basketball down in Portland. Cooper and Ace Flag making their return to the Pine Tree State with Montverde Academy for the main event. And it was everything it was hyped up to be. Oh, for sure. It's cool. Come on, he's back home. Things sold out in less than 12 hours. I made the statement, you know, I'm not afraid to say it out loud. He's the best white American basketball player since Larry Bird. If anybody thinks any different, they're crazy. This weekend in Portland, Cooper and Ace Flag had their homecoming, and it was everything they expected. So great, um, great environment, great atmosphere. We just come home and get a win. You know, just being around Maine, you know, everyone's got full support of you. So when you're playing here, you know, no matter what happens, you know, everyone's going to be behind you the full way. It was called the main event, put on by Maine Hoops, where the flag's Montverde Academy Eagles played two games back home in front of two sellout crowds. I think it exceeded all expectations. Um, like I said, just an incredible environment and just a lot of fun. And it's definitely an honor to be able to represent this state. Um, if I could pick anywhere to live, I would, I would live here. You know, I just, I've grown up here, lived here most of my life. I'm just super happy for Ace and Cooper. This is probably the last time we'll get to play in Maine. The Eagles put on a show, as they normally do, taking down Gonzaga College High on Friday night before dominating Cats Academy on Saturday. And the whole event really marks a full circle ending for the Flag Boys. Once young fans in the crowd, now the main attraction, something they'll never forget. 
All right, certainly was a fun event in Portland, and I'd be remiss to mention the main event without talking about a few other Mainers making their return to the courts in Maine this weekend. Before the Montverde game on Saturday, St. Paul's School in New Hampshire suited up for a game with Bangor's Landon Clark and Oxford Hill's Tegan Pelletier suiting up for the Pelicans. Landon was a star for Bangor High two years before heading to St. Paul's. Tegan, the same with the Vikings. Both are also huge for Maine United this summer, too, and here were their thoughts on this weekend's homecoming for them. That was really cool. Just I want to thank like the Maine community, just everybody in Maine coming, showing up to the game. Maybe it was not for our game, but still, it was really cool having a great crowd, a familiar place. It's just a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. Even with you know playing with Maine United, we didn't get to play in Maine a lot. So just to see a lot of familiar faces here and kind of play in front of them was pretty cool. All right, a whole lot of fun down there. Let's move on to some football now. It was snowy, windy, and overall just not a good day in Foxborough on Sunday. The Patriots finishing a historically poor season with a 17-3 loss at home to the New York Jets. But the game was more than just the end to the season. It could have very well marked the last game in Bill Belichick's career with the Patriots. The legendary coach who led the team to nine Super Bowl appearances, six Lombardi trophies, and 20 years of success could be on his way out. It's the Pats' second straight losing season. There are a lot of questions. Belichick supposedly meeting with Robert Kraft this week to discuss the future of the franchise and whether or not Bill will be a part of that future. I'm on a contract. Um, do what I always do, which is you know, every day I come in, work as hard as I can to help the team in whatever way I can. Uh, and so... That's what I'm going to continue to do. Look, I'm for whatever, um, you know, collectively we decide as an organization is the best thing to help our football team. And, you know, I have multiple roles in that, and I rely on a lot of people to help me in those, uh, in those responsibilities. Should be interesting to see what happens there. We'll have our eye on that. To the basketball court now, Celtics in action in Indiana, trying to make it two wins in a row against the Pacers. Seas trying to stay hot. They are on the road this time in Indiana. Second quarter, Jalen Brown is going to get it in the corner. Defense is all over him, but that does not matter. He's going to pull up and splash home the three ball. 25 points for him in the first half. Skipping ahead to the fourth quarter now, Seas down two. Buddy Heald gets it. Miscommunication on the screen, and he ends up with a wide open three. Boston down three now. Drew Holiday has it. He gets it over to Al Horford, and he knocks down a triple of his own. We, of his own, we are all tied up. After a foul was reversed on Jalen Brown, Pacers win it. Benedict Mathurin puts up a three, and they get Porzingis on the shooting foul. He would make two of three, so here come the Celtics. One last chance to send it to overtime. Cornette can't connect off the lob. Pacers win 133-131. to 131. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. CEM DP Porter Contractors have been in business for more than 40 years. We have recently added an electrical division to further be of service to our loyal customers. DP Porter specialized in design bill for commercial and residential projects. We can assist our customers from anything from lot procurement to helping find a finance company for your project. CEM DP Porter is currently hiring for all positions. We offer competitive pay as well as great benefits. To inquire about employment or construction, please reach out to 848-7486 or visit cemmaine.com. If you've been injured in an accident, get Maine's most recognized personal injury law firm working for you today. The Law Offices of Joe Bornstein, fighting and winning for injured Mainers for nearly 50 years. Selected best lawyers in America for personal injury, recognized for professional excellence. With more than $500 million collected for injured Mainers and over 25,000 victories for Maine families. Call Joe for a free case evaluation and get the Bornstein Advantage. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, 
When pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. I'll go naked. I bet you will. The fun <laughs> in a game of words. Flip flop, cougar, little Caesars. Ah, oh, sounds like a Tuesday for me. <laughs> He's choosing wisely. We hope they know what it is, because we gotta take it. <laughs> Wanna try to win this thing, so I'll take Noogie. 25 words or less. Knuckle head rub. Noogie, you won the game, guys. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. This is Sheldon Cooper's Theory of Relativity. Yeah! Young Sheldon, five times a week on Fox 22. A Bangor nonprofit just got a big boost thanks to a philanthropic group known as 100 Neighbors Who Care Penobscot Valley. Four times a year, each member commits to giving $100 to a deserving charity, pooling their hard earned dollars together to bless a nonprofit in the area. Our Jody Hersey has more. Times are tough, but 100 Neighbors Who Care Penobscot Valley has been helping to lighten the load by donating a minimum of $10,000 four times a year to nonprofits in Penobscot County. Stop Addiction New England is a discipleship and recovery program in Bangor that's helping the homeless and those battling addiction. This nonprofit is the latest recipient to be blessed by the members of 100 Neighbors Who Care. We have a, a wonderful opportunity to, as I mentioned many times before, put a little good out there, but this is the apex of that. This is a chance when we go face to face with the charities that we're supporting uh, and turn over the donations from our over 200 member group. Kevin McGuire is the founder of Stop Addiction New England. He says the funds from 100 Neighbors Who Care could not have come at a better time. We need repairs on a ceiling that has had some plumbing leakage and also for a new vehicle. We have three vehicles that have almost a million miles. McGuire says both men and women who come through his doors are provided with food, shelter, and the opportunity to tap into their faith and a better way of life. It's a nine to 12 month intense accountable discipleship like I said they become a student of the Holy Bible and we teach them how to live um, life skills work ethics and we have a little leniency and grace of course because behaviors have to change that stem from the addiction in March 100 neighbors who care Penobscot Valley will meet again to hear from three more deserving nonprofits that could use a boost in Bangor I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 news Always great to see the good that's being done in our community by volunteers. Alrighty, folks, that is going to do it for us from everyone here at Fox 22 News. Take care, have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow night at 10. Good night, everybody.